Hello, welcome to the Wiggle Cafe. Today we are joined by a very special guest, uh, former England and Team GB hockey player, now professional triathlete and psychologist, Natalie Seymour. Uh, Natalie, welcome to the, to the Wiggle Cafe. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Friday. thanks for having me. It's, it's awesome to be here. No problem. Um, so you're here with Walker today and we'll be talking all about your uh, quite unique career path, uh, it's fair to say, and we'll be talking to everyone at home um, with their triath triathlon questions um, and anything they want to ask you really. Um, so we've got an iPad here for all of your questions. So um, let us know where you're watching from today um, and send in your questions in the comments and I will get them straight away and I can ask them to Natalie live. Um, we've also got lots of, lots of stuff happening. We've got prizes to give away, including this Orca transition bag, which we'll get onto very shortly. Um, and we have some nice other prizes and games as well. So stay tuned. Um, but first of all, we'll talk about the Orca Triathlon uh, Transition Bag. We will be giving this away later on in the show, but your way to win this bag is to actually guess what mystery word we have on the chalkboard here. So obviously at the moment it could be anything, um, but Natalie and I will be giving away some subtle hints and clues during the show um, so, you can, so you can try and guess what it is. And we might even be nice and add some letters throughout the show so you can see um, if you think you can guess what the word is. Um, so let us know, as I say, where you're, where you're coming in from today, where you're watching from, what questions you have, um, and we'll be reading those out to Natalie. Um, but Natalie, first of all, um, let's talk about you as you're here today. Um, so you've got quite a unique career path. You've gone from playing hockey at a very high standard with England and Team GB, uh, and now you're a professional triathlete. So how on earth does that happen? Um. Yeah, I guess it is quite unique, although there are other pro triathletes who've come from hockey backgrounds oh, as well. So, um, But I think I was inspired to do a triathlon watching my sister and my auntie do the London Triathlon, actually. And when I saw them do it, I was like, oh, I'm, you know, I would absolutely love to do that. It just looked like such a challenge and it was an amazing atmosphere. And um, I've always kind of done a lot of sports so when I was growing up I did every sport going and I swam and I ran and things like that so you know that gave me a good kind of basis for it and after I retired from hockey I just I started doing a few 10k runs and um, cycle commuting to to my job and that's how it started really. So you've always been very heavily involved in, in sport then? Yeah yeah definitely. And, and how how if at all has, has hockey helped you with being a triathlete now would you say it has at all yeah I mean massively I think being part of an elite sport just gave me such an insight into what it takes to be like competitive at a sport and you know what it takes to train full time and what you need to kind of do and also when I was playing hockey it wasn't just about the hockey we did a lot of strength and conditioning we did a lot of run training and, right. and I think that really carried through into triathlon because you know, it gave me really good run speed that I've now tried to translate into more of an endurance engine and um, and the strength and conditioning has made me kind of touch wood fairly strong and robust in terms of being able to manage the training load and things like that. So, okay, yeah, cool. Um, just looking through because I've got a lot of comments here coming okay, through already. Um, so Ollie's asked how, will we, how do they win the bag? So as I said, Ollie, you will be guessing the word on the chalkboard here. At the moment, that is very difficult because all you've got is seven letters to choose from. Um, we will be giving away clues and hints. I will give you a quick clue now. It's, it's relevant to today's Facebook Live. Um, so the word might come up in conversation, um, but I will not give you too much away just yet because we'll be giving away letters for the word shortly so you'll get a better idea of what that is. Um, Samuel Grasso says, hello Natalie, do you miss hockey and uh, being part of a team? Yeah, I mean, being part of a team is fantastic, but actually within triathlon, I train with lots of other people and the camaraderie and the kind of support that you get from the triathlon community is amazing. Um, there's definitely differences, you know, being an individual athlete, especially in competition, you really realise like how much it is really down to you on the day rather than kind of all the dynamics that can come with being in a, a team sport. Um, but I get the same thing from the fact that, you know, I love training and I love being able to challenge myself and push myself. And I got that in hockey and now I'm getting it in triathlon. So I don't miss it day to, I haven't got time to miss it day to day. Yeah. When I watch a game in hockey, like, and I catch up with old friends, sometimes I watch it and think, oh, 
you know, I'd quite like to play, but I think it completely break me now. The cut, so you don't play any hockey at all now? Then? No, no, no time right? to, um, with all the triathlon training yeah. and working and things like that. But yeah. plus, I'm not sure I could change direction or <laughs> anything anymore. I'm not sure how the skills would hold up. <laughs> yeah, I can run in a straight line now, but not not change direction so much. And I guess psychologically, it's a massive difference going from team sport to to individual. Uh, being a psychologist yourself, I guess that's pretty handy so um yeah, yeah. so how how mentally have you had to sort of change your your thought process around competing from team to individual yeah I think it's interesting because like I quite like the objectivity of triathlon in that you put the work in in training and you get on the start line and all you can really do is you know put that work into the race and it's mm. very much the person who wins is like from start to finish who gets there quicker whereas yeah. in games there are so many other dynamics and factors that come into play like the opposition and teammates and um, umpires and all of those kind of things so I think that really changes then the kind of mental approach mm -hmm. in that you know you have to find ways to try and for me I need to just stay relaxed and focus on the processes of the race and focus on my own race and trust the hard work I've done in training and mm -hmm. try and like you know, try and maybe visualise that on the day or have kind of, I'll have kind of phrases or words that I might say to myself during the race that just kind of keep me in that moment focusing on what I can do because that's all you can do in a triathlon and, and that, you know, I actually, I quite like that and I think I learned also from my hockey days what works for me in terms of like my mental approach and how to kind of, like I say, stay relaxed, stay focused on the processes and not let kind of pressure get to you and those kind of things. Would you say it's harder being in, as an individual, uh, psychologically? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are times when it's harder, mm. but on the flip side of that, when you're in a team, you really do feel that you kind of, um, sometimes you can feel pressure if you're having a bad day, it affects the whole team mm. and that can feel really difficult because you don't want to have a negative impact on yeah. the, the rest of the team, whereas having a bad day at least it's only you that you're kind of letting down if you like I mean it's different I think both are harder but in different ways okay cool let's get back to uh, some of your comments that are coming in guys uh, thanks for sending them in we've got loads here uh, a couple of early guesses as well at, at the word so um, Andrew Andrew Howe says Liverpool uh, not sure if that's uh, no not All quite my family are Liverpool football fans are they? which is a bit random oh but, that's strange yeah, yeah. Don't, don't know Andrew who do you no no, that's incorrect, Andrew. So uh, have another try. Uh, we will make it a little bit easier as it goes on, as I say. Sharon Smalls says, hi. Uh, she's in Kings Lynn in, in Norfolk today. Um, hi, we are in Pizza Hut, says Helen Ashcroft. Uh, nice to know we are being broadcast in a restaurant. That's nice. great. Um, Lucy Baldwin says, do you miss being part of a sports team? I think we touched on that a little bit there. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but would you say you miss it? or? Yeah, like at times you do, but I still have lots of friends from my hockey days and um, like I said like I train in groups with the triathlon lot as well and yeah. so you, you still get the kind of similar the element in yeah. the community and yeah definitely okay uh, Natasha says she's from watching uh, she's watching from Southampton actually which is just down the road from us here in Portsmouth uh, she's asking which is the best triathlon you've ever done oh that's that's hard I love a hilly bike course so um Pay de Zay in the south of France is absolutely beautiful, beautiful bike course. Yeah. Um, lots of climbing in about, I think, about 1,300 metres in 90k. So, like, yeah, that race was brilliant. Um, and in, when I first started doing triathlon, I did some of the Always Aim High series, which are in different places in North Wales. And one of the runs was up a mountain, basically, which right. was, it was just such a different challenge. And I call it a run, but you basically can't run up it. So <laughs> you've got moving. like a K in and then just have to kind of scramble up this mountain. But <laughs> it was beautiful and a real challenge. So I really enjoyed that. So you'd well. recommend that one? Yeah, definitely. Called The Snowman. Nice. Okay. Uh, Samuel Grasso says, uh, do you have any particular product to supplement your diet? Um, so I guess he's asking about nutrition there. So yeah. what, what you use for nutrition. I guess it, it'd be quite good to understand... Um, if you've got a triathlon coming up, what you would eat prior to that triathlon, yeah. uh, maybe during and yeah. then after as well? Yeah. I mean, I think the main thing to say is anything that you're going to use on race day during the triathlon, make sure you practice with it because 
you know, it's really important to know how your body responds to the different nutrition. Mm. And I think the longer the distance, the more important the nutrition becomes. Um, and particularly when I'm racing 70.3 and the full Ironman, um, you need to be eating, particularly on the bike, um, and know what amount of carbohydrate you need in order to be able to then run well off it. Right. Um, so I think they're the kind of key things I'd say. Like before, like stick to things you know, but just make sure it's really well balanced. It's got some carbohydrates and proteins and. Mm. I try to avoid too much fibre the day before a long triathlon as well. Um, and yeah, like I say, for the day, just make sure you've practised it. Um, okay. And I find little and often, both on the bike and the run, the most helpful way for me to get the nutrition and also the fluid on. Yeah. So if it's a hotter race, make sure that you're drinking more and that you've got salts in the drink that you're using. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So never never try a new, tr- new nutritional product on the day of, a, yeah, of an yeah. event that makes sense um okay we're going to take a break from the questions there's still loads coming in um and, and people saying where they're coming in watching from um but we do need to talk about another competition which we uh, recently launched on our facebook group uh, which is actually around tattoos funny enough bit strange bit random but we asked people to send in their tattoo uh, photos of their run swim uh, cycle or try really um, related tattoos and we've got those which we're going to get them up on the screen right now so we had loads come through uh, during the week and we whittled it down to our top three um, and we have Kenny Gallagher we have Elaine Randall and we have Rob Stead so those are the top three uh, they are on the screen now and we're going to pick one of those three as our winner um, of the competition to win a drum roll Wiggle water bottle, of course. Um, that will obviously come with a little bag of Harry bow as well, as does most most wiggle orders. Um, so the way we want you to choose who wins the wiggle water bottle and bag of Harry bow is literally hashtag Kenny, hashtag Elaine, or hashtag Rob with who you think should win. So whose tattoo do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. Um, and shortly we will be going through the comments and we'll decide who has the most votes. Uh, so fairly straightforward, um, let us know who you think should win. Um, also I can see there's, there's guesses coming in for the word challenge to win the Orca triath- Triathlon Transition Bag. Um, so keep those coming in. I think we should probably give them a letter now just to make it a little bit easier, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, I think that's fair. Cool, so we know what the word is, you guys obviously don't. Um, which letter do you think we should give them? Which number in, in here? Should we give them one at the end to make it a little bit difficult? Let's, yeah, yeah let's give them the last letter. So we'll give you the last letter. Should make things a little bit more easier for you to guess. The last letter is N. Okay, so that probably hasn't helped at all, but um, if you think you can guess what that word is, let us know um, and you'll win this bag. Which, Natalie, I believe you have used before and you would recommend. So how would you, what would you say people are getting, not for their money, because technically it's free, <laughs> um, but how, how would you talk about this bag? What would you say yeah, is the benefits? I mean, yeah, yeah, I've used a range of the Orca bags and this one's a really good one because it's kind of in between the much bigger transition bag and then a smaller bag. So okay. it's like you can take it as hand luggage and things like that, and, but also you like use it day to day. Yeah. Um, I really like the fact that there's like a separate compartment at the bottom for your wetsuit, um, which keeps it, you know, separate to everything else, particularly after you've used it and it's mm-hmm. all wet and kind of mucky and things like that. Yeah. So that's really helpful. It's got a pocket for your helmet on the front to keep that separate and nice and safe and kind of harder Tidings as well, well yeah. so it doesn't get damaged. Brilliant. And then most people who know me know that I'm a bit of an organisation freak, so I love a load of different pockets for different things so I know where everything is, so like nutrition and there's separate pockets within that pocket as well for things, and yeah. a pocket at the back and loads of room for your kit, and as most triathletes are kind of trying to manage lots of different things, there's also like expansion, so when you're trying to carry around too much, you can fit everything in as well, so yeah, it's pretty good. So it's a good bag and you highly yeah. recommend it? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Definitely. So this bag is actually um, not quite on the Wiggle website yet, which makes it even more valuable for you guys um, watching at home. So if you do win this, it's, uh, it's a bit of an exclusive to a certain extent, um, but it will be on the Wiggle, Wiggle website very soon. Um, so keep your eye out for that one if you like the look of that. Um, and if you want to win it for free, 
Uh, then simply, guess what that word is? I say simply, it's not very simple at the moment, but it will get very easy. Um, okay, let's go back to some of your comments. Uh, Dan Hayward says, afternoon all. Afternoon, Dan. Hey, Dan. Um, Scott Stevenson says, hello all, listening from Hertfordshire. So hello to you, Scott. Uh, and then we've got a question here from Joe Trevetti. Joe says, uh, in regards to swimming training, which training aids would you recommend? Uh, so he's currently swimming at around two minutes, five seconds per 100 meters. Uh, and would like to improve his speed and endurance? I mean, I think with swimming, like I've really learned that it's very technical, so it's not just a case of try harder, you'll swim faster, yeah. um, which you know, was a good learning thing. And I think if you can get your stroke looked at by someone, like a video analysis or something like that, that's mm -hmm. a really good way of learning what it is about your stroke that you need to improve on, okay. and that will make the biggest difference before trying to just swim further and longer if you're swimming with not such good technique then it it won't help yeah um and i think that that's like the key getting a coach or okay so focus focus on your technique yeah uh okay good advice uh there you go joe there's your question answered uh we've got jack cameron tuning in from chile wow so that's a uh, that is far away. Uh, Vinnie that's jones amazing. uh probably not the Vinnie jones <laughs> says afternoon all um, and Laura says, good afternoon all as well. Uh, just signed up for my first triathlon in the mm -hmm. summer. What are your tips for a newbie? I guess that's quite a broad question. Um, yeah. But I wonder if you are a new, if you are new to triathlon and you've got a triathlon booked in, Yeah. is there a, a specific sport within the tri sports that you should start first? Would you recommend or do you think it's down to preference? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends what you need the most work on. But mm -hmm. I think actually like, if you're new to it, just trying to have consistency week to week in your training is really important. Mm -hmm. Even if that is just one training session on each discipline, it's better to do that than to every so often kind of go out for a really long ride and then be really tired and not yeah. be able to kind of repeat it because that's the best way you'll kind of improve. I think no question is a silly question to ask in relation to when you're first starting out triathlon. Mm -hmm. So my first duathlon I ran out of T2 with my helmet on and <laughs> made all sorts of errors in transition tried to hop on my bike and because I didn't know all the kind of rules and the ins and outs so yeah. and again try and practice what you're going to do on race day before so test out your wetsuit if it's a wetsuit swim test out your race kit and that kind of thing okay and um, that would be my kind of advice and there's so many people in the triathlon community who'd be more than willing to help you out if you do have a question so brilliant but today you've got a unique experience here where you can ask natalie any question you like yeah, regarding try um so keep your questions coming in uh, as she says no question is a silly question um so we will do our best to answer them uh, jen jen says where is the best crowd i assume she's talking about previous triathlons that you've done yeah um when i did 70.3 worlds in chattanooga that was pretty amazing i think just because it's such a big event and um there were loads of crowds there and I'm really fortunate in that like I often have friends and family around and actually on the run when you're really suffering and you see someone you know and they're mm. cheering for you it's like Big it's like boost. the best feeling especially if you've been out on the bike for a long time like yeah. this is you know in a full Ironman it could be like five hours or something and then you get back and you see them there it just gives you such a boost so I think that that's kind of really special in terms of hockey i don't know if she means hockey but i played in argentina in front of like thirteen thousand argentinians wow. and the, they are so partisan they make like, some noise, don't they? and um the stands had like just been built from scaffolding and they were like jumping around <laughs> on them and it was you couldn't hear anything and so wow. that was a pretty amazing experience as well in awesome. terms of, like playing in front of a crowd like yeah, that yeah sounds great you, you mentioned there about how um an iron man can take five hours for example so how mentally, what, what are you telling yourself during that time? Because you are alone, aren't you, really, other than the crowd? So yeah. what are you telling yourself in your head just to sort of keep going? And Do you break yeah. it up a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Like, that, that's kind of what I was going to say, like break it up right. and focus on the processes. So kind of recognising where I am in terms of like distance and when I should be eating next, mm -hmm. when I should be drinking next. Um, focusing on like technical aspects of like recognizing if I'm like my form is faltering on the run or yeah. even like with your pedal stroke and that kind of thing um but just breaking it up and I think also accepting that because it's such a long day there are going to be points where 
you're going to feel terrible mm-hmm. and like I try and kind of say to myself that it will pass like and that they'll you know that's the key thing really like just pushing through when it's hurting and try yeah. and know that it's not going to last forever you can get through the other side of it because you've done it in training or you know it's such a long day it's just not going to last forever yeah hopefully. believe in yourself then, <laughs> yeah yeah it? definitely okay cool um guys don't forget to uh keep your guesses coming in first of all for the for the word on the board um so we can see there it ends in n um let us know what you think that is for a chance to win the orca transition bag uh, and also get your votes in for the free tattoo uh, finalists so you've got hashtag Kenny hashtag Elaine or hashtag Rob um, let us know which one of those you think should win which one of those tattoos is your favourite by the way yeah, well I'm a little bit biased by the swim bike and run and the, the, that's pretty cool but I have to say Rob's skeleton on a bike yeah. is pretty impressive it's pretty cool isn't it? yeah Very yeah cool it must have taken a long time for somebody to yeah to do that yeah good yeah, detail so, as well yeah exactly okay that's natalie's favorite let us know what yours is and we will pick that winner in the next couple of minutes um so that person will win the wiggle water bottle and a bag of haribo um let's go back to some of the questions then uh sharon smalls uh, says i can run a half marathon and cycle miles but my swimming is not very good how can i improve it well i said earlier like having someone look at your technique, technique yeah. yeah i also think like time in the water it, there's no other way of getting around it and really that's the way once you look at the technique and kind of hone that it is then just amount of hours you can put in in the water it yeah. makes such a difference and with swimming even more so just that regular time in the water means that you've got like better feel and things like that mm-hmm. I think also like if you can find a group like a swim club like a master swim club or something like that or have some friends to swim with again that's just going to push you on so I, I swim with some swimmers who faster than me and that really helped improve my swimming as well cool i just noticed we've got a couple of questions here um people actually asking what is transition (laughs) um so i guess a couple of people probably haven't done triathlon before fair question so can you explain what that is to the audience yeah i mean it's a really good question and um in between the swim and the bike and the bike and the run you have to go through something which is called a transition and the size of that and what happens in those transition areas varies depending on how big the race is but essentially you run into transition after your swim and you take your wetsuit off and you put it in a bag or you put it by your bike and then you can you have to put your helmet on maybe put your bike shoes on or they might be on your bike and then you run with your bike out of transition don't try and get on it in transition (laughs) run out of transition on your bike and then you mount your bike at a specific line and then when you come back off the bike, you have to get off at the same line where you mounted and then wheel your bike back in and then get your run shoes on. Make sure you take your helmet off before you do that. Uh, lots of, <laughs> a lot of things to remember there. So but it's again, not easy then. Practice it. Yeah. Like and that might sound a bit silly and you might look a bit silly like on your street practicing <laughs> your transition, but it really helps. And if you can't physically practice it, you can kind of practice it like mentally and visually like what order am I going to do things in where are things going to be in relation to where my bike is where Mm -hmm. my wetsuit is so I would run through when I wrap my bike and things like the day before the morning of the race I actually run through transition in the order that I will on race day so I've actually physically done it familiar with it Yeah. yeah okay so there you go that's what that's what transition means guys uh thanks for your questions um, we have another one here from Natasha, which I will ask you, but I'm just going to make sure that you guys can guess what this word is. Let's make it a little bit easier. There are a couple of guesses coming in. Um, so Noel Strahan says Peloton. Um, Sharon Small says Nutrition. And John Martin says Clubman. I'm not going to tell you if either of those are right, uh, because you're going to have to wait and see if this letter might rule a lot of that out. Um, so let's give another letter. I am going to go for this one. There you go. It's another N. Okay. So we've got letter, 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 N, letter, letter, N. So some of you might find that quite easy now. I can see there are a couple of comments that have already got this right. So um, if you're not sure and you want to cheat and look through the comments, then you might... <laughs> You might be able to work it out, but yes, a couple of you are right. I won't say who right now, but um, we will announce it very shortly. And don't forget you're playing to win the Orca Transition Bag. 
Okay, so uh, another question here um, from Natasha. Um, what is your training schedule like? And how do you fit all three sports into your week? It does sound quite complicated. And, and how on earth do you find the time? Yeah, I mean, I've got a coach who like helps me and like plans all my training, which I I think is really great because it takes a lot of effort even just to think about how you're going to fit it in. Mm -hmm. um, and now I train kind of two or three times a day, and that will kind of vary across swim, bike, run depending on what elements you're focusing on. Okay. And I think that you know it's taken me kind of a good few years to build up to that amount of training where you're swimming, where you're swim, bike, and running kind of two to three times a day. Yeah. Um. So, I think anyone who is starting out in the sport, it's not that you have to train huge volumes when you first start out, but obviously as the distances increase and you mm -hmm. want to be more competitive, it's an endurance sport and you really need to get that kind of volume in. I think it's really important to like have a variety and in intensity in the across the sessions. So like when the hard stuff is hard but then when you have easier sessions make sure you do them yeah and, nice and easy what would you say the weighting is between the three the sports would you say it's quite equal or would you say you heavily weight i mean in more? terms of hours because the bike is non-impact it's a really good way of getting a lot of aerobic hours in without kind of the high level impact yeah. so there's a lot of time spent on the bike and again particularly in ironman because the bike distance is so long like a big proportion of mm. the race yeah um, but last winter I did a huge swim block because um, I wanted to improve my swimming so a lot more of it was weighted towards my swimming Yeah. Um, and I think yeah it's just recognising where your strengths and weaknesses are and what you need to work on at different times but at the moment it's pretty even in terms of number of sessions during the week right so, okay so. cool okay good to know um, let's have a look through some of these comments then because we're now going to announce the winner not off the orca bag, not just yet. Um, we're going to announce the winner of the Wiggle Water Bottle and the uh, Bag of Haribo. So just a reminder, we've got the free, the free tattoos, which I believe are up here somewhere on your screen. Um, and you've been voting for your winner. Hashtag Kenny, hashtag Elaine, or hashtag Rob. Um, and we're just going to go through some of these comments now and see who is the most waiting behind your votes. Uh, so I can see it. Initially, there's a lot of Elaine uh, and Rob. So, um, Nasty, I'll get you to have a look at these as well and help me out. So, so looking for the hashtags, we've got a few Elaine there, Rob. Yeah. So I'd say Elaine and Rob at the moment are pretty neck and neck. Lots of triathletes tuning in. Yes, absolutely. Let's go back this way. I'm going to say I think Elaine nicks it, you know. I think Elaine wins that. Um, yeah, let's go Elaine. So, uh, Elaine... Elaine Randall, uh, with your Iron Man tattoo, you have won a brand new Wiggle water bottle and a bag of Haribo. So we will get that sent out to you um, as soon as possible. So just send us a direct message uh, with your name, what you've won, and uh, your full address, and we will get that sent to you, um, as I say, as soon as possible. So um, do we give them another letter? What do you think? Should we be generous? Yeah. Make it a bit easier for yeah, them? Go on then. Let's give them another letter. So uh, how can we make this? Easier, but not too easy. Um, I'm gonna go with this one. There we go. So we know so far it's a seven letter word um, and you've got an N in the middle and an A-N at the end. So I can see um, quite a few of you are getting it correct. So uh, well done to, well done to a lot of you. Uh, I'm not gonna say who or what the word is yet. Um, but there are a lot of uh, correct answers. Um, okay, let's see if we've got any more uh, questions for you here, Nasty. There are quite a few coming in. Um, so, uh, as a psychologist, uh, how has that helped you mentally with competing at a high level? So I think we've spoken about how, how this helps you just competing, but at a high yeah. level, I guess we've spoken about pressure a little bit already, but yeah. how has that helped you as, as to, opposed to someone who isn't so clued up on psychology? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's helpful to have an understanding of, like, how you're feeling and thinking and the impact that that has on, kind of, the way you behave or the yeah. way you feel, like, physiologically and things like that. And But as with anything, like, you need to kind of practice things. So there are kind of techniques you can use and things that I'll use in training and racing that have come from, like, my understanding of psychology. And it's different for everybody, so mm -hmm. it's really important that you just practice whatever you're going to use on race day before 
um, yeah. and it helps me understand you know like I said that I need to stay relaxed and distracted from the race that's a really good thing for me so I'll you know before a race I might listen to music or read or something that's going to completely take my mind off it until the point where I actually start the race because if you're thinking through the race the whole time at a point where you can't do anything about it then you might just end up worrying about all the things that might yeah. happen so if you can distract yourself um, that's a really good way of not thinking about it okay because if you tell yourself not to think about something actually that's all you'll think about yeah <laughs> so, it's like yeah. reverse psychology isn't it yeah yeah so okay that's kind of helpful. cool um for viewers that want to get into triathlon um what early advice would you give them um would you say don't do it or um <laughs> would you give them some sort of you know real early advice that you'd say maybe focus on something in particular or go down a certain route yeah i mean I think enter a race because mm -hmm. having a goal is like the best way to stay motivated and sometimes it's like oh I'm not quite ready to enter but if you put the race in then you'll make sure that you're ready to yeah. race uh, so I think that's a really good I think look around your local area and find a club or some other people who are doing triathlon because that's the best way to learn mm -hmm. um, and also it makes it really enjoyable when you're meeting up with other people yeah and I think you don't need like all the gear when you first start or the most expensive gear actually it's much better to like focus on just improving your swim bike and run yeah and i think sometimes that can put people off because when you go to a race it's pretty terrifying like how much equipment and gear and stuff that is needed yeah but i think when you're first starting out it's more important to just practice your swim bike and run and then as you get better yeah okay then the equipment stuff becomes more important but swim cycle run repeat then yeah there you go okay um and on a triathlon race day what is in your kit bag what are the essentials that you absolutely have to have in there um what is it that do you have a checklist and you just make sure that those things are on there every time yeah. and what are those repeating things i mean a list is really important as like as silly as it sounds because even now yeah. even though i've done loads of triathlons i'll still have a list just to make sure because there are a lot of things you need and the longer the distance the more things you need yeah um so i just go through stage by stage the race and mm -hmm. all the things i'll need so like in the swim don't forget your goggles you'll get a specific hat normally for the event don't forget that um special like body glide for your wetsuit so or vaseline or baby oil or something because wetsuit chafing is like the worst yeah, <laughs> so that's an essential um and then yeah like bike shoes bike helmet nutrition run shoes um elastic bands to attach my bike shoes to my oh, to, okay. so you can if you're going to jump on your bike and again don't just try <laughs> make sure you <laughs> practice but you tie elastic bands to your sh from your shoes to your bike so the pedals stay right um so that's maybe something that not everyone would have in their Good bag tip, yeah. um clean clothes for after um there's a lot of things nothing i'm trying to think of anything else a bit random that maybe you wouldn't already have but it is i mean there's so much stuff that you haven't really got room for non-essentials yeah so, exactly and yeah. Uh, i guess the key thing there is then checklist and making sure you've got a list that you can tick things off so you don't forget anything yeah definitely okay great um we got a really nice comment in here from uh, from natasha which uh, so natasha says natalie is such an inspiration for young women wanting to get into triathlon thank you so much for answering my questions oh thank you so natasha. really nice really, really nice pleased. comment there from uh, natasha thank you for tuning in and thanks for all your questions uh, keep them coming in um, what I'm going to do is give another letter for you guys for the word, just to make it a little bit more easier. Um, it's getting quite easy, actually. I think the next word, the next letter is probably going to crack it. Yeah, I think um, I've seen a few correct answers there on, are the, a few on the comment section as well. Um, let's go with this one. Okay, that is getting a little bit easier now, isn't it? Um, I can see yeah, a lot of people have, have got it in there. Though, so I just if you haven't already, definitely put it in the comments. Exactly. If, yeah. you, if you're not sure, have a guess. Um, and you should be right now, I'd imagine, a lot of you. Uh, I can see a lot of you are right already. So keep them coming in. And uh, your prize is sitting right here. Um, another question from, from Natasha, actually. Uh, what is your favourite way to relax after a race? Uh, a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Refuel. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
and actually like yeah just spending time with like my family or friends who've come out to support me yeah um after the race is like a really nice way to to relax and um in the days after like you actually want to get moving again and it sounds silly to say oh i just love going for a spin on the bike but because it's not training it is actually like a really nice you know you'll just go for a coffee spin or something like that um and that always feels like a really nice way to like chill out as well yeah yeah right after it's just just relax on the sofa yeah basically (laughs) not a lot and eat a lot yeah put your feet up sounds good to me um Okay, great. We've got uh, a lot of guesses coming in for the word, by the way, all of which are looking pretty correct now. Um, so we'll give you another letter shortly, but not just yet. Um, uh, just got another question here. So a lot of our audience, so we've been, we've been doing a lot of uh, or videos and things with our customers actually fairly recently. Yeah. And I think the main obstacle that they, that's sort of come up in, um, in conversation most times is finding the time uh, to actually balance the training with like the personal life stuff at home a lot yeah. of people watching might have kids yeah uh, families where they've got to spend time with those guys yeah. so how do you kind of balance that side of things you know all the training time because it is quite time consuming isn't it yeah yes yeah, it's, it's definitely time consuming and like trying to balance it with work and things like that I think like there's nothing kind of there's no secret recipe and it's a bit dull but mm. you just have to kind of be organized and plan mm-hmm. and I think like get people on board with your plan so then they can have a say on like you know try and negotiate when you know it's say can I have this time for training yeah. but then I'll do this time with the kids yeah. or whatever like and and like I'm really fortunate in, like I don't have those responsibilities at the moment but I am balancing it with work and in that I think um I just am really clear I'll have a plan for the whole day about where my training in fits and I'll you know I'll make sure that my swim is right by work or it's on my way back from work and yeah. I'll maybe run part of a uh, commute or like if I'm traveling somewhere then maybe I'll cycle it and then meet my family there or, mm-hmm. and so things like that trying to put it into what you're already doing okay. and getting the family involved you know so I did a run session at the weekend and my um <laughs> we have lost light in the Wiggle Cafe. Um, Hang on, slight technical It's okay, glitch. we're back. Don't worry, no one's gone anywhere. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So the, I was running and, you know, like my aunt and uncle were on a bike and actually my uncle's got this kind of, it's like called Canny Cross and the okay. dog like pulls him along um, on his bike. So it's just, <laughs> it's fun and it's a bit different, but I'm also getting like my training in and spending time with family. Yeah, so okay. So making things convenient, I guess. Um, yeah. Like en route and things like that. Yeah, Always helps. exactly. Okay, great. Um, Tukba's joined us. Uh, he says hello from Izmir in Turkey. Uh, so we're broadcasting live in Turkey. Awesome. Hello to you, Tukba. Uh, James Taylor has sent in a question. He says, what is the one thing that you can't live without before or after a race? Tough question. <laughs> I think, yeah, that is a tough question. I think, like, a good breakfast, I was going to say, before yeah. a race. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, making sure that you've got your nutrition right. And I guess after as well, like when you're training so much, like the nutrition side of it and like making sure you're fueled is yeah, it's really, 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 Im- it? really important. Yeah. Um, in, especially in terms of like related to triathlon, I guess the thing I can't live without the rest of the time is probably just a good book as well. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Is that for the, the downtime then after yeah, when yeah. you're relaxing? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. And you do spend a lot of time chilling out and resting yeah. because of the training. So. And I guess that goes back to what you were saying earlier about taking your mind off it before yeah. the race. Yeah, yeah. Um, just exactly. completely taking yourself out of the equation. Yeah. Okay, um, there's more coming in here. Uh, Cliff Crabtree says 50p in the metre. Absolutely, Cliff. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We need, to, uh, we need to pay our rent on the, uh, on the building by the look of it. Um, don't panic, though. The lights do go off after a certain amount of time, so we have paid the bills and everything's fine. Um, I'm going to add another letter onto the, onto the word here. Just to give you guys a little bit more of a clue, it's going to get quite obvious now, so I'm hoping a lot of you can get it. Um, I'm going to give the first letter, which, as some of you will probably already know and assume, is I. Okay, so there we go. We've got two letters left. Uh, Keep your guesses coming in. I can see a hell of a lot of you are getting it right at the moment, so uh, well done to you guys. Keep them coming in, and 
we will pick a winner out of the correct answers very shortly. Uh, Charlie Clarkston's joined us. He says, hello, guys. So, hello, Charlie. Um, Kay Adiola has had a guess, and she's also sent in a question. So, what are your hopes for future in regards to sport? Well, this year, I'm... So, my next race is actually in, I think, maybe six weeks now. I'm doing Ironman South Africa. Wow, okay. And, like, my main aim this year is just to really focus on stepping up to the full distance and learning that distance and trying to get some experience. Okay. And with the hope of qualifying for Kona as a professional, that's kind of my aim. And I think this year is really a build year in terms of getting some experience and then go from there. So yeah, looking forward to South Africa, kind of in the last hard block of training at the moment and then yeah, see how it goes when I get out of there. Six weeks to go, okay, yeah. well, well good luck with that one. We'll be wishing you well. Um, we've got another question here from Lisa Bugsley, uh, who actually says, these live streams always seem to happen when I'm having my afternoon coffee break, which is ace. Glad we can uh, time it right for you, Lisa. Um, she says, hello, Natalie, uh, from sunny Scotland. Do you have any good tips uh, for hill climbing on the bike? I feel like a slug on some steep climbs at times. I bet there's some good hills in Scotland, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it's just finding a rhythm that suits you. So, you know, if you're in a group, don't worry about following the group and going off too hard because then once you've gone off too hard and you kind of explode on a climb, it's really difficult yeah I think like anything it's practice on the hills um so I tend to prefer to like have quite a low cadence and push a bigger gear but some people prefer to like spin up climbs and kind of use a smaller gear and I think it's just finding that what works for you yeah um I think the thing with short sharp climbs is that they're just painful and <laughs> you've just got to get over them mm -hmm. but um yeah that would kind of be my my advice. Okay, cool. Uh, Kay Adiola says good luck, by the way, for the uh, South Thank African climber. Um, and we have some more. So Cliff Crabtree, who uh, who took took a bit of a shot, asked for the lights going off. <laughs> uh, has asked if you've got any pre-event rituals. Um, I always have a pizza the night before. Actually. Do you really? Yeah. What's your choice of yeah, toppings? Yeah. Oh, pretty plain. Just yeah. Margarita. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm a bit plain um, as well. I like a bit of pepperoni on the top as well, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, not so keen on the pepperoni. Maybe. Like then after races, like again, because like you're just trying to keep plain simple food before races. Right. It's got a good mixture of things. Lots but, of carbs as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and like I said, like practicing my nutri practicing my transition. Um, and yeah, but nothing like kind of really superstitious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just pizza. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Um, Neil Moss uh, has asked, do you always train in the aero cycling position? Um, not always um, so like a lot of the winter like I'll spend like on my road bike just getting the miles in mm -hmm. on the turbo I focus on being in the time trial position and I think it's really important you know in the weeks leading up to South Africa now I'll make sure that I'm doing my longer rides on my TT bike as well because you need to be able to hold the position for the time that you're on the course otherwise it's there's no point in kind of having that yeah. option yeah. Um, and it is a really different position and you will be engaging different muscles so it's really important to I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot but <laughs> practice it before race day um, but you can still go out and you know enjoy time on other bikes which is really nice because it's good variety yeah I guess practice is key so although you're repeating it it's an important thing to remember um, Cliff Crabtree is uh, I had another shot at us actually he says focus camera person with some exclamation marks so Gavin behind our camera we will have a big chat after this and tell him off he's obviously not doing his job very well um, but thanks for that Cliff I will let him know he's he all, still smiling though he's so he's, still not, smiling. he's not taking it too personally he's, he's not very bothered is he um, <laughs> we'll have to get that into him after the, after the show uh, Cliff also says margarita for the win so uh, yeah. he totally agrees with you there on the pizza topping um, I'm going to give one more letter because otherwise that's that, really generous complete. I know I'm being very generous but <laughs> Let's get these guesses coming in uh, thick and fast. We want to choose this winner shortly. So if, you're, if you've entered and you think you've got it right, stay tuned. We will announce the winner very shortly. Um, which one? Which one? I'll let you choose the last, uh, the last letter we're going to give. I reckon the second letter. This one? Yeah. Okay. You're going to go for this. I was going to, but you're the guest. You get to choose. I mean, come on. If, you, if you're not getting that right, it's probably something wrong with you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm not being funny. Um, <laughs> Kay Aliola says, my favourite thing on a Friday afternoon is uh, to, to watch these streams. Oh, 
Oh, nice Brilliant. Thank you very much, Kay. Uh, it helps with the guests, of course. It's not me that people are watching. Um, we are now going to do a quick game that we get every guest to do so far in the Wiggle Cafe, uh, which is why we've got the, the chalkboard. Uh, it's called the Ping Pong Challenge. Okay, sounds a bit strange, and you're probably wondering what the connection is. But we've had three guests into the Wiggle Cafe so far, and a bit of a mixture of results. So our first guest, Nick Anderson from Polar, uh, unfortunately he had DNF, he didn't manage to do the challenge. Um, Stephanie Kitchen done the challenge in 2 minutes 37. And Nick Underhill from Fern did the challenge in 24 seconds. Now you're probably wondering what the ping pong challenge is. Um, now the ping pong challenge is, I'm going to give you this jug full of ping pong balls. Okay. And there's a few more down here just to make sure you don't run out. <laughs> and basically what you need to do is you bounce. saying something about how many it's going to take? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hint at all. Uh, so you've got to take the ping pong ball. Yes. And you've got to bounce it. Let's get these magazines out of the way. You've got to bounce it from this table, one bounce, into the wiggle mug, which is right there. Um, sounds quite simple. I can tell you it's not that simple, but it is doable, as you can see. It's doable in yeah, 24, 24 seconds. 24 seconds. Now I mean, that that's is, the pressure, pressure's on there. Yeah. But at least someone's not completed it, which kind of... Exactly, there's a bit of a balance there, so you <laughs> yeah. won't be the first one to, uh, to DNF. Um, so guys, let us know um, how long you think it's going to take Natalie to, to do the challenge. Um, so as I say, there's a three minute maximum, so you have okay. to do it within three minutes. I'm going to get the stopwatch. Uh, people, people watching will be phone. glad, otherwise they could <laughs> be, be here a while. Yeah. Yeah. So let us know how long you think it's going to take Natalie and uh, we will get this going. So Charlie Clarkston's got in quickly, he says 47 seconds. That's not bad. I'll give Would it you a be go. proud of that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be happy with that? I'd be proud if I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Kay Adiola says 15 seconds. So she thinks you're going to go no straight pressure. to the top. Yeah. No pressure indeed. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Feeling confident? How's your hand-eye coordination skills? Well, in my hockey playing days, I'd <laughs> like to think I had some hand-eye coordination. Goal scoring, none. Not no so ability much. for goal scoring. But <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Okay, here we go. Um, Neil Moss, sorry, one more thing. Neil Moss has just put anything like me on the ping pong challenge and he's going for a DNF. Uh, sorry, Neil Moss. What are you playing at? But there's loads of others who think you're going to do it <laughs> nice and easy. Uh, Cliff Crabtree says beer pong without the beer. Yes, it is pretty much that good, but we, we're not, we don't encourage drinking. So here we go. I've got the stopwatch ready. You feeling ready? Feeling ready. confident? Let's go for it. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Don't forget to uh, keep your encouragement coming in, guys. No more DS. That's good things. length, but I haven't quite got the line. So you're 10 seconds in now. I'll, I'll be collecting the balls. We've got Gavin behind the camera who's going to collect the ball. Yes! Oh! oh. Ah, oh, you're slow on the old. <laughs> I reckon shave, 15 seconds. I'll shave some mini seconds off there. Um, wow, that was Not unbelievable. Not competitive or anything. 18 seconds, that is brilliant. So you literally fly in straight at yes. the top of the ping pong challenge. Well done, that is awesome. Little <laughs> round of applause from the two people in the room. <laughs> um, that is awesome. Let's just have a quick look at who actually guessed 18 seconds, if anyone. Um, I think someone said 15 and I said I'd be like... Yeah, you said you'd be over the moon with that, yeah. didn't you? So that's awesome. So Kay Adiola actually said Might 15 just seconds. retire <laughs> with, the, with the ping pong. That goes on the CV as well, by the way. That's yeah. up there with everything else you've done. Um, let's have a look. 47 seconds we had, didn't we, from, uh, from Charlie. 20 seconds from Laura. Oh, that's not bad, close. not pretty bad. Close. Uh, Jamie Blythe says one minute easy. Well, actually, it was even easier than that, wasn't yes. it? 18 seconds. Um, Chris Mobbs said 12 seconds. Tugba in Turkey says 54. Uh, Warren Knight said two minutes. So, no, it needs to have more faith in you there. <laughs> um, and Laura, Laura Halloran's just given it a new name. She's called it T Pong. So, T Pong, I like yeah, it. Yeah, we'll go with that. Like um, and now we've Maybe got some. Coffee Pong. Coffee, yeah, I like yeah. that, coffee pong. Um, we've got some uh, congratulation posts uh, or comments coming in now. So uh, Charlie says, wow, wow, nice one. Kay Adiola says, I was so close. <laughs> yes, Kay, you were very close. Uh, some congratulations. Uh, and yeah, massive well done. Loads of nice comments there. So well done. Yeah, you go onto the, uh, onto the chalkboard, the famous chalkboard, and we'll put you right at the top ready for, uh, for our next show. You some of those like sliding things, like uh, Top Gear so style. So we can slide those bosses. down now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll try and get that one for the next show. Um, so it's time to announce the winner of the Orca uh, transition bag. 
So this is your prize that you're playing for or that you have been playing for. We've got so many comments coming in. So if you think you know what this word is, it's your last few seconds now to get that down quickly into the comment section. We're gonna go through, have a quick scan through and randomly pick one winner um, who has the correct word. So that is it, your time's pretty much up. The word of course was? Iron Man. Iron Man, there we go. Easy, wasn't it? From the, from the very beginning, it was obvious what it was. Um, a few people trying to get a cheeky, uh, cheeky last uh, comment <laughs> in there, but we're not going to pick you as the winner. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly scroll through okay. all the comments, and I just need you to basically tell me when to stop. Okay. Um, so I'll give it a quick scroll, we'll stop on the person, and then we'll announce the winner of the Orca tri uh, transition bag. Okay, let me go to the top first, so we don't exclude all the people that got it right nice and early. Okay, and tell me when to stop, and I'll stop on the way. Stop. We have stopped on Vinnie Jones, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, not the famous Vinnie Jones, I don't think. If it is, let us know. Um, get in touch, Vinnie. Uh, but you are our winner, Vinnie Jones, of the Orca Transition Bag. Let's nice. have a little round of applause for Vinnie. Well done, Vinnie. Um, we will send that out to you as soon as possible. Can you just direct message us uh, on Facebook with your name, uh, what you've won, the Orca Transition Bag, and, uh, and your full address as well. Um, and we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Um, some few congratulations coming in uh, for, for Vinny there. Vinny says, oh yes, so he's still watching, which is great. Well done, Vinny. Um, we'll get that over to you as soon as possible. Um, Kay Adiola says, clap, clap. Laura says, well done, Vinny. Uh, and James Taylor says, well done, mate. Amazing prize. Yeah, you're right, James. It is a pretty good prize, isn't it? So uh, worth about £100, I think. So uh, a really nice bag. And uh, don't forget that will be available on the Wiggle website very soon. Um, so if you want to buy it yourself, then you will be able to very shortly. Um, okay, I think that's it. That's it. That's the end of the show. How have you found it in the Wiggle Cafe? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you for everyone tuning in and all the great questions and things like that. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the next person in, seeing how they're getting on with the ping pong challenge. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <I think laughs> Try and hold on to the I think you'll the be at the top. You'll be at yeah, the top yeah. for a while, yeah. Um, no, massive massive thank you to you, Natalie, for coming in. Uh, and, and Orca, of course, for uh, organising it for us. Um, thanks for everyone watching at home. Thank you for all your questions. They've been really useful, and I'm sure you found it useful uh, with Natalie's uh, responses. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you back in the Wibble Cafe very soon. Thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> no, I was being led by you, to be honest. <laughs>